Good evening, everybody. My name is Steve Chasman. I'm the executive director of the Long Island Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence, and we welcome you to the 33rd annual Adele C. Smithers Angel Ball. A little different this year, but uh, we're well aware. Well, first off, we are coming to you live from the Thrive Recovery Center in here in sunny Westbury, Long Island. We'll talk more about Thrive a little later. Uh, we thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we offer a prayer and a thought that your families and your neighbors are well and safe, although we know that we meet each other tonight in really challenging and difficult times. Thank you for joining the Angel Ball because this year there are no singular honorees. The honorees are all of us. We are the heroes and the heroines. As COVID-19 has devastated our fair region disproportionately, New York State and clear across the country and the globe. We are the community of we. Tonight's theme is unity, recovery, and service. And I have to let you know, LICAD's offices, our clinicians are available 24 hours a day and have been for the last eight weeks working remotely and for the last 64 years. A little later on this hour, you're gonna hear a great keynote Someone's going to share her experience, strength, and hope. And that keynote and that messenger is Miss Mackenzie Phillips, who has not, who couldn't have been more gracious as COVID hit and we had to recalibrate this angel ball. She's been so accommodating. So please stay tuned later on this hour. You'll hear from Mackenzie Phillips. LICAT has one of the oldest employee assistance programs on the island. I don't know if you knew. The Open Arms EAP, and let me say, of the 40,000 EAP members that Open Arms has, we have never been prouder of our EAP members who are King Cullen workers, Local 1500, who are the United Local Grocer Unions, and another one of our EAPs is Southampton Hospital. So to our doctors and our orderlies and our nurses and everyone working in healthcare uh, on the East End from Southampton Hospital, We've never been prouder uh, to be your employee assistance program. So um, before we begin, we all know that this is really challenging and difficult times. Um, we pray again that your families are safe and well. So it is appropriate that we begin tonight with an invocation of healing. So please allow me to introduce a LICAD board of director, a board member, who also happens to be uh, a tribal elder for the Shinnecock Nation right here on the island. For the invocation, please welcome Reverend Mike Smith. Creator God, as we gather together this day, we gather with a deep sense of gratitude and thanksgiving for all of the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. As we prepare to celebrate this gift of recovery, we ask that you would fill us with grace and mercy, that we might proclaim the message of hope, healing, and health. Grant us your wisdom and your guidance that we might go forth into the world and proclaim the good news of life beyond addiction. Strengthen each of us that we might share this good news with our neighbors whom we meet as we journey along the way. Be with us this evening and all the evenings of our lives. This we ask in the name of all that is good and beautiful, all that is grand and glorious. We say, Aho, Amen. Thank you, Reverend Mike, for that powerful invocation. Uh, we're all so proud to have the work that we do with the Shinnecock Nation with you. We're proud to have you a board member. Speaking of elder statesmen, tonight um, I think we want to invoke the memory uh, of someone who embodied unity, recovery, and service. So please allow us to display a picture of Father Peter Schweitzer, who remains the spiritual anchor for LICAD. So hopefully we're seeing a picture of Father Peter uh, we are invoking his spirit tonight, and of course, the spirit of our Brinkley Smithers and Adele Smithers and their spirit of philanthropy, uh, Christopher Smithers, who 
Uh, we lost too soon, but we think of him. And um, there are powers of examples. There are powers of examples which are all of you. Remember, there are many heroes and heroines, or if I may, there are many angels that are working tirelessly here on Long Island in the last eight weeks amid uh, COVID. Now, we'll go back into the past just once. Last year, this week, we hosted 400 guests at the Garden City Hotel in better times. And we had Judy Collins, Sweet Judy Blue Eyes, all 400 of us singing Amazing Grace. And we can use some Amazing Grace. Last year's honorees were Jim and Sue Cusack. Now, Jim left us a little while ago. He's up with the Angels, uh, with Father Pete and Chris. But, you know, there seems to be a, a continuity if we can see a message from Sue Cusack and all of our friends at Villa Veritas. So please welcome Sue. Hello, everyone. This is Sue Cusack and the team from Villa Veritas in Crohonkson, New York, last year's grateful honorees from the Long Island Council. Many of us are from Long Island, so our hearts are with you tonight. To all our friends at LICAD and all over Long Island, we thank and honor all who are on the front lines, mourn those that we lost, and share a message of hope. Together, we are strong, resilient, and we'll get through these tough times. We send blessings and prayers and wish you a great night. Love, Sue, and your Villa family. Thank you, Sue. And as we're all angels, particularly in this difficult time, there are other states people that I absolutely have to mention who have been angels on LICAD's shoulders and not only serve as supporters of the life-saving mission of LICAD, but are constant ambassadors and advisors to our cause. So to Marty and Margot Kramer, see you sitting there. Marty and Margot, thank you very much. To Alfred and Bonnie Devendorf. Alfred, Bonnie, thank you. To Frank and Dory Barker. Frank, look forward to breakfast soon. Uh, to Nikki Smithers and family. Really appreciate all your support. And of course, other spiritual anchors include Brother Tom and Brother Kenneth from Chaminade and Kellenberg. So um, as we move on, just know, a little housekeeping tonight. This is an internet world. We've all been Zooming and doing platforms and whatnot. If the internet should go down, we have very capable professionals working on it. So stay with us, and we're going to bring it right back up. Okay, so as we get started tonight, as you can see, I'm kind of filling in for the Masters of Ceremonies. I'm hoping I'm doing a good job. A little odd talking to an empty room, but I'm hoping you're all out. But we at LICAD only have one Master of Ceremony. And no matter where he is in the globe, he flies in for our LICAD Angel Ball, our events, our golf outings, and he has a very unique ability to getting people excited about recovery and excited about the LICAD mission. So with that, Scott Clark couldn't fly up because he lives out of state because of the lockdown, but he did send a heartfelt message along. And like I said, tonight, tonight is LICAD's Giving Monday night. Tomorrow's Giving Tuesday. Tonight's Giving Monday night. We are close to our 200,000 goal. So, someone does it better than me. Hear a message from Scott Clark. Hi everybody, this is Scott Clark, welcoming you to the Angel Ball. Different deal this year, isn't it? I wish it could be with all of you at the Garden City Hotel, but circumstances are a little different this year, and I'm hunkered down because of this coronavirus here on Seabrook Island in the low country of South Carolina. But I wanted to thank you all. Well, the three words that Steve Chastman has been emphasizing to all of us is service, recovery, and to that point, we are united. And thank you for your service, for your money, for your help in helping LICAD and helping us to help others who are suffering in the throes of addiction. My name is Scott. I'm an alcoholic. I'm recovering one day at a time, 27 years, a few months, and a few days. But I only do it because of, well, because of service to recovery. And thanks to you, we are all helping in this mission and helping LICAT to help others. It's a tough time. My heart goes out to you in the New York area because you've suffered more than most. But we are here and the mission continues. And to that, I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. 
It's a little shady, a little sunny, it's a little cloudy, but uh, it's one of those days that um, I feel grateful to be alive. And I'm grateful for your help. And together, well, maybe we stay unified until next time at the Garden City Hotel next year. But until then, thank you again for helping us to help others. So let's get on with the show. Let's have fun, enjoy the show, and again, thank you so much. One day at a time. Hey, that's a catchy tune, isn't it? One day at a time. 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 Thank you, folks. Enjoy. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Scott, for that message. Scott has a skill in getting people excited about recovery and excited about my cat. Look at this number here. We are close. So please, as they say in certain circles, please give what you can, but don't give your last. Help LICAD, help Long Islanders. For many years, we've been available 24 hours a day, and people need our help, and we need yours. Since this is the Angel Ball tonight, let us thank the many angels in our community who are keeping us safe, keeping us healthy, the doctors, the nurses, the medical staff in Long Island hospitals that are battling COVID-19 on, on behalf of us all. Let's get a hats off to them. To Suffolk and Nassau County Police, to Commissioner Jerry Hart, to Commissioner Ryder, thank you for all the work the men and women in uniform in Nassau and Suffolk are doing. To our first responders, our EMTs, to our grocery workers who continue to put food out there, and we're the employee assistants to a few. These are really challenging times. And of course, to our partners in government. So um, to executive, County Executive Laura Curran and County Executive Steve Ballone, you are doing a great job and we thank you. We have a special partnership with Executive Ballone. So to County Executive Ballone and Curran, thank you for the daily information and keeping us engaged in the process as we all work collectively to overcome this devastating pandemic. To Governor Cuomo, Governor Cuomo, thank you for your leadership in this really troubling time. LICAD has a great partnership with you, Governor, and your office, and we know you're busy and perhaps wanted to participate tonight, busy stopping a healthcare pandemic that is disproportionately impacting our region. But you know what? We are honored and privileged tonight to have a message from the Lieutenant Governor, Kathy Hochul. So please welcome the New York State Lieutenant Governor. Hi, I'm New York State Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul, and I just want to say to hello to all my friends at the Virtual Angel Ball. Your work is more critically important now than ever before. New Yorkers are really suffering. Isolation, depression, anxiety, all this is leading to our increased dependency on drug and alcohol. But with the support of the Long Island Council, we will help them get through these tough times because we are the Long Island Tough. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Hoka. We appreciate you participating tonight. And on behalf of all New Yorkers, thank you to you and the governor's leadership. You know, I received a call just a few hours ago from our dear friend. And for those of us who've been fighting on the front lines of addiction, Senator John Flanagan gave me a call just a few hours before this event, wishing us well for this evening and uh, hoping that we can all pull together as a community but there's been fewer champions or leader than Senator John Flanagan, who's been a longtime advocate for New Yorkers and Long Islanders who are struggling with substance use issues. You know, I've said this many times before, but in times of great crisis comes great opportunity for genuine leadership. And I have to say that the LICAD Board of Directors are some of the most empathetic, compassionate, dedicated, energized, charitable men and women I have ever had the opportunity to work with. These people, these men and women, they personify um, what it means to be in service to others. So uh, to our board chairs, Karen Hirschleifer and Mike Brennan, Mike, Karen, thank you very much. And a real special thanks to a LICAD board member who worked tirelessly with our team at LICAD and our production team. This could not have happened Kevin Lyons, LICAD board member. Kevin, thank you for this evening. We are making it happen here because LICAD, the board of directors, the staff,
the community. Tonight is not about LICAP. It's about all of us. We are we, and if we're going to overcome this pandemic, we need to act in unity, recovery, and be in service to others. As I mentioned, LICAD remains fully operational. You can reach a LICAD clinician 24 hours a day. And in fact, at the bottom of your screen right now, there's going to be our LICAD 24 hour line. So whether it's substance use issues, we all know that there's a secondary and tertiary pandemic happening um, in the midst of viral fears in the midst of a, a, a substance use epidemic, and I'll get there, anxiety, fear of economic and job security. Right now, if you need to reach a LICAC clinician, you could reach them 24 hours a day. And those of us who are healthcare professionals who are to un or who understand addiction know that loneliness, viral fears, economic insecurity, social isolation, these are the breeding grounds for self medication and the breeding grounds oftentimes for the seedlings of a substance use disorder. No judgment, but we know that liquor stores have been declared essential businesses. Liquor sales have gone up in the last eight weeks, 250%. No judgment. Like has been existent since 1956, but just know that we've been getting a host of calls in the last couple of weeks dealing with alcohol use, misuse, misuse, abuse, and ultimately for some, dependence. You know, prior to eight weeks ago, and the 10 years prior to that, I would tell you that we were in the midst of another healthcare pandemic. Now, let me proceed cautiously. We are not here quantifying human loss or suffering. But for the last decade, we've been in the midst of a substance use pandemic, and we're not gonna quantify loss. And we know that more than 65,000 Americans have lost their loved ones to COVID-19. Our hearts and prayers and condolences go out to you. But please be mindful that last year across the country, 72,000 Americans lost their battle to opiate overdose. And akin to that, 88,000 that same year lost their battle to alcohol abuse. So whether it's COVID or substance use disorder or depression or mental health, substance use disorders is killing 150,000 Americans every year and particularly in the last 10 years. We're not here quantifying human loss, but you know, the truth is we've all been home the last eight weeks. We've all been given ample time to really look at ourselves, to analyze our own fears and to really challenge ourselves as to what our character and spiritual existence is. And you know what? The truth is that sickness is sickness and suffering is suffering. And therefore it makes no difference what the illness is. The question is, do we have a moral responsibility? Do we have the empathy and compassion to rise above ourselves and be in genuine service to others? This is a time for angels. And you all qualify. If you're on this event tonight, you're our angels, okay? I'm hopeful that we emerge from this crisis with a newfound understanding of what exactly community service is. What is charity? What is service to others? And how do we determine who's worthy of our love and support? Is it just a few? Just our family? Or is it anyone who is illness expanding out beyond neighborhoods, community, and across the whole country, perhaps even the whole world. You know, I heard a great quote, quote recently. It got me thinking, as we've all had probably too much time. Before. It said, for an individual to truly be kind, he or she must swerve from their, their own path, their own agenda, regularly. In order to be a genuinely kind person, we need to swerve from our own path regularly. Translation for me, we all have, or I have my own agenda sometimes. It's I, me, mine. But I feel best when I'm thinking of others, when I'm going out of my way to be of maximum service to others. So um, as we look to empathy and compassion, tonight's focus, the angel world, is about 
all of the angels that are currently working, existing in our community, which includes all of you. And Long Island is chock full of them. So um, as we work through this pandemic, just know it is in fact a we. We are all in this together. So please welcome a partner with which LICAN has had a 40 year partnership with, 40 years. And they are open to this minute to accept referrals or people who need help for detox, inpatient, outpatient, recovery homes. And that's our friend to George Benedict, who was a, a great friend to Father Swicegood, who founded CPO 40 years ago. But tonight we hear a message from its CEO and a great friend of my dad and a great mentor to me. Please welcome Mr. Mark Eppner from the Seafield Organization. Hi, this is Mark Epley, CEO at Seafield Center. I just want to thank each of you for participating in tonight's virtual angel ball for LICAD. I want to do a big shout out to LICAD and everything that they do. And um, shout out to all the workers who are continue to help find, help people find recovery. And to the, the sponsors who are taking the phone calls at nighttime and the people organizing Zoom meetings for 12 steps. Uh, a lot of great work is going on, especially now, and uh, we need it more than ever. So thank each one of you uh, for for doing what you do. Thanks. Thank you, Mark, for that very kind message. Uh, the fact that Seafield is open to assist Long Islanders amid this crisis um, goes a long way for a lot of people, and we value that partnership. You know, when I think of compassion in individuals, though, I have to tell you, um, Several people come to mind, but the top of my list. If you need to get someone into treatment and ex there are existing obstacles, if you need to throw an event that's gonna make sure that the community is, is educated, if you're gonna advocate for laws changed that are gonna increase the rights and the opportunities for people who are sick in New York State, there's only one person that we call. And if you want an outcome to be of its maximum uh, uh, desired effect, I call it the Ragney factor. And most of us know this individual as someone who would go above and beyond for not only friends and colleagues, but for people who are sick and suffering. Claudia Ragney is our next messenger, the owner and proprietor of the Kenneth Peter Center. Say hi to Claudia. Good evening, and welcome to LICAD's first ever virtual angel ball. We thank you for your support to allow LICAD to continue to provide free services to the people in crisis across Long Island. Hi, I'm Claudia Ragney, founder and owner of the Kenneth Peters Center for Recovery. Along with the team at LICAD, we are open and continue to provide a full continuum of patient and family services. We are committed to helping our community get through this crisis safe and sound. Tonight, we're here to honor all our frontline workers, from those in the detox and rehab units, to our outpatient workers, to every single person who is paying it forward. Tonight is about recovery, it's about unity, it's about service. God bless you all for supporting LICAD, and please give till it hurts. It is imperative for LICAD to be able to stay open and operating during and after this pandemic. Please dig deep, Give till it hurts. We desperately need your help. Thank you. You're back. Thank you, Claudia. And thank you for all your love and service through the years to LICAD. Uh, you're truly our angel. And that's why you were the recipient of the Founders Award uh, in 2018. Another record-breaking night for us. So special. Uh, as I mentioned, LICAD remains on call remotely 24 hours a day. You can get a licensed clinician that works at LICAD to help 24 hours a day, which means that all of us, we've been fielding calls. So I'm gonna give you two calls that came in over the last month, most recently in the last two and three weeks. The first call, someone told me that there was someone on the phone for me that wanted to talk to me. So I got this young person on the phone. They said, uh, this is so-and-so, do you remember me? I squinted, but said yes. They said 10 years ago, after multiple arrests, you sent me to detox, and I was part of the LICAD relapse prevention group. And I wanted you to know that in April of this year, just a few weeks ago, that this individual celebrated 10 years in recovery from substance use disorder. And in addition to that, wanted me to know, or wanted LICAD to know, 
that not only are they sober 10 years, but are currently working in the field of human service and are working 23 hours a day like other healthcare professionals trying to help Long Islanders in need. That's the like mission. And of course, I offered my congratulations and it's never about like head. It's always about the individual, but this is our job to help people along on their path. Like head mission since 1956. The second call I got came in on Thursday, last Thursday. I picked up the phone. I said, hi, this is Long Island Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence. How can we help you? And there was a man on the phone. He said, this like head? I said, yes. He said, my people is not calling back. And there was an awkward silence. I knew what he meant. We at Live had known what he meant. That if this dealer didn't call back soon amid the pandemic, he was going to enter into a physical and psychological withdrawal. And after counseling from one of our skilled clinicians, again, under the leadership of Adam Birkenstock and Marcy Siciliano, these clinicians are working 24 hours a day. And with some, we knew and made him understand that when we're beaten, we're willing, and the time was now. Now, whether we're talking about COVID, whether we're talking about suicidal ideation, depression, or substance use disorders, the time to get treatment is always now. And you know who lives that philosophy? Jack and Sean Hamilton of the Long Island Center for Recovery, they established a protocol or philosophy with LICR that just bring them in. I know because our team have made referrals there at four in the afternoon and four in the morning, and they do 24 hour admits. So um, Sean, thank you for providing us with a message. We value the partnership with the Long Island Center for Recovery. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Sean Hamilton. Hello everyone. I am Sean Hamilton with Long Island Center for Recovery, LICR, which was founded in 1995 by my husband, Jack and myself. We are a licensed medical detox and substance abuse facility. This is a strange time for our whole planet and for all people. But what I see is hope and kindness, neighbors reaching out to help one another. And I know that we will recover, we will heal, and come back even stronger than we were before. We are New Yorkers. Our doors are open to be of service to New York and the tri-state community. My wonderful staff and I are ready to help many. Be safe, stay well, and thank you. Thank you, Sean, and thank you, LICR. We greatly appreciate the partnership as we all work together to navigate this healthcare crisis. As I mentioned, tonight is about community champions, and we are all heroes and heroines of the pandemic. But our next guest, rises above and beyond. So he's a true partner to LICAD and the fight against addiction. But I have to tell you, this unique professional, um, he works tirelessly to get drugs off the street, to get gangs off the street, and in the same process, works with LICAD and other agencies to make sure that individuals and family who have been adversely touched by addiction, that they equally get help. So that's a very unique dialectic where you have someone getting drugs off the street, but helping people get to treatment. Uh, it's such a unique that in 2017, we awarded this individual the Angel Ball Community Champion Award. And I have to tell you, in a lot of ways, he's more deserving this day than even in 2017. It's our honor to uh, welcome the Suffolk County District Attorney, Tim Seaman. Good evening and congratulations to LICAD for another outstanding year of advocacy on behalf of the residents of Long Island. The work you do saves lives and it is more important than ever in light of the global pandemic. I want to thank you for your partnership with law enforcement in making Long Island a healthier and safer community. Congratulations and have a great evening. Thank you, District Attorney Cena. You are a great partner to LICAD, and we look forward to continuing the partnership. Again, to you and County Executive Ballone, a great job uh, in Suffolk County and across Long Island. As I mentioned, tonight we are coming from an empty, but a very beautiful Thrive Recovery Program in Westbury. Uh, three years ago, LICAD, in partnership with Family Children, the Long Island Recovery Association, and FIST, Families and Supported Treatment, 
we got together and we opened the first Long Island Recovery Center called Thrive in Hop Hop. What is Thrive about? It's a refuge. It's a place where people who are in recovery, individuals and families from substance use disorder, can have a place to fellowship, receive support services, and just to be with each other, meet a recovery coach. So if you haven't been to Thrive, and LICAD maintains two offices in the hop on. Now, we just passed our third year anniversary at Thrive, Thrive Hop. We didn't have a chance to celebrate. We're gonna get back to that celebration. And last year, the second inception of Thrive happened in Nassau, right here at 1025 Old Country Road. And if you haven't been to either one of the Thrives, you still got some things to look forward to. So um, as far as partners go, please welcome a great advocate, Dr. Jeffrey Reynolds. Unity, recovery, and service is the perfect theme for this year's Virtual Angel Ball. I'm especially proud of the partnership between FCA and LICAD and some other partners in creating and operating Thrive, Long Island's first and only recovery center. Now more than ever, we need a home for prevention, access to treatment, and recovery, and now we've got it. Thank you, Jeff, for those words. And uh, I'm standing here in Thrive, like I mentioned. And you know what? Advocacy in the last decade during the substance use pandemic has been so imperative to saving lives. It's so important that we were up in Albany and locally that we were able to make sure that people and for individuals and families with substance use disorders, that they had a voice and that that voice be heard. And I have to tell you, making sure that the voice of recovery is heard is one of the primary objectives of LIRA, the Long Island Recovery Association. And it, I'll tell you, there is no greater champion for as long as he's been doing it and with such a powerful voice as the founder and executive director of LIRA, Mr. Richard Buckman. So, Richard, thanks for your words. Thanks for your message. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us and our friends at Lighthead for their annual Angel Ball. During these challenging times, our prevention, treatment, and recovery communities stand united in our commitment to provide support for our community in need. As we pause to recognize our heroic frontline workers, Lyra would like to acknowledge the 40 plus peers who answered our call for help and volunteered to provide peer recovery support services, including recovery coaching sessions to anyone from our community in need of a human connection. It is through acts of kindness like these and others and our collective community spirit that we shall emerge from this crisis united and stronger than ever before. Thank you and please stay safe. Thank you, Richard. You know, along with like had many have been fighting on the front lines of the substance use crisis, both here on the map and across the state and particularly up in Albany making sure that accountability and justice is served as we deal with the aftermath of the flooding of our markets, the flooding of our streets with lethal and dangerous prescription opioids. Once again, making sure that accountability and justice, we've lost too many to overdose, that these lethal prescription opioids, that there is accountability. Ladies and gentlemen, we're truly honored tonight to have the New York State Attorney General, Letitia James, who sent a message along for tonight's Angel Ball. Hi, it's Letitia James, the Attorney General. I want to thank Steve Chaseman and the LICAD board and staff and your many supporters for making this first virtual Adele C. Smithers Angel Ball a success. In this time of heightened fear and anxiety, LICAD continues to serve as the essential first responder for so many Long Islanders who are struggling with addiction. Your healing work, your healing hand has never been more important during these dark days. Long Island is a stronger community and New York is a better place because of all that you do. Thanks again and best wishes for even a greater success in the coming year. And please know that when we come out of this on the other side, we're going to come out stronger and more united than ever. Congratulations. 
thank you to the New York State Attorney General. Thank you for all your fighting and, and making sure that those we've lost and those that will be afflicted, uh, that justice is served. Thank you, Madam AG. You know, LICAD has known for many, many decades that substance use disorder is a family disease. This is why we've been doing family interventions at LICAD for over half a century. You know, um, I've been at LICAD for 14 years. We forged many professional relationships with some really great, insightful partners. You know, but our next guest, he saw a truth and he saw a disparity. And he wanted to make sure that as we're advocating for individuals with substance use disorders, that there is a powerful voice for the families because this is truly a family disease. So um, when FIST, Families in Support of Treatment, was founded, um, the founder and the executive director pulled together a whole bunch of moms and dads and brothers and sisters and grandparents and made sure that the family had a voice and were not left out of the conversation. You know, I'm dating myself, but there's an old traveling Wilbury song that says I'm going to the end of the line. Well, on a personal note, I'm going to the end of the line with this individual. Ladies and gentlemen, the founder and the executive director of FIST, our friend, Anthony Rizzuto. Hi, everybody. My name's Anthony Rizzuto from FIST Family Supported Treatment. I want to take a second to thank uh, LICAD for the opportunity and congratulate them on their 33rd annual Angel Ball. Uh, at FIST, we are doing what we can to help families in need. Lori Carbonaro is pulling, putting up relevant information on social media. Um, Claudia Frizzell is providing virtual support group for families every Thursday night. Paulette Felipe is comforting people through prayer, meditation, unity, recovery, service. Together, Together we, are we are stronger. Thank you, Anthony. And thank you for all the work. And we see... Uh, uh, Claudia and Lori and uh, all the FIST moms and dads and family members and your very powerful group and keep doing what you're doing. You know, it was back in January, this year, 2020, kind of seems like a long time ago this past January. Like I was very fortunate to, to host an event at the Hop Hop Thrive office to promote and support a federal bill, a federal bill called the Family Support Services and Addiction Act. And, you know, the bill was introduced and put forth by a great leader for families that are touched by addiction and a great leader to the people of New York and in New York State, and that's Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. Uh, Senator Gillibrand's office and, and LICAD have had a longstanding partnership. We are so thankful that Senator Gillibrand has sent along a message for tonight's Angel Ball. And we are hopeful, Senator, that despite the pandemic, and we hope that gets resolved soon, too, that we have not lost sight of this federal bill for addiction families. Thank you, Senator Joe Brand. Hello, I'm Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. I would like to thank everyone for attending the virtual 2020 Angel Ball. And thank you to LICAD for hosting this important event. When Stephen Chastman reached out to my office, he said he would like tonight's theme to touch on unity recovery and service. These words mean a great deal to me now more than ever. When we come together as a community to achieve a common goal, there is no obstacle that can stand in our way. We are a resilient country, and I know that we will get through this and come out stronger than ever. Thank you, LICAD, for all you do and for your continued support for individuals and families struggling with addiction. And thank you again to everyone tonight who is attending this virtual event. Stay safe, and we will all be together soon. Have a great night. Thank you very much, Senator Gillibrand, for all your work on behalf of New Yorkers and America. Greatly appreciate your partnership. You know, you know what the greatest nation in the world is? Donation. It is number 188. We are close. We're all working on the WE program here, folks. Please help LICAD, help Long Islanders. Be angels. Who's missing baseball out there? For those who know me know I'm not really a sports fan, but I know people are terribly sad that this is your chance. Grab a glove, hit the game. This is our sport. This, it's, there's nothing funny about it. 
But you know what? You're in the business of helping us and helping others. This is our chance to all serve as a we. Unity, recovery, and service. Let me be honest with you as an exec. I didn't think we get this close. Thank you to all of you for coming out tonight. You're making a tremendous difference in the lives of many. And you know, here we are in Westbury. We're not too far from Levittown, the first suburban community, right? But this whole thing of intentional community is a bunch of malarkey. You gotta need each other. And in the last eight weeks, we've shown as Long Islanders that not only do we need each other, but how we can help each other, how we can reach out and deliver food. By the way, that number, that LICAD number, it's so important. After tonight, after eight o'clock, pick up the phone and call someone who may be struggling with social isolation, with depression, drinking, essential businesses, right? Someone who may be older and alone. This is our chance. There's a great saying that says, you want to be miserable? Think of ourselves. If we want to be happy, we have to think of others. Here is one opportunity to think of others. Help LICAD, help others. I got just about $188,000. We got a half hour left and we're pushing for two. 94% there. You're the greatest people in the world to like him. You show up for us every year. Thank you. With that, speaking of communities, you know, there was a, well, there is a great woman who 10 years ago saw the drug epidemic ramping up. She's a mom, she's a wife, and now she's a grandmother. But she saw a problem in her community and didn't sit back and say, this is someone else's problem. She said, this is our problem and my problem, and I'm going to do something about it. And she started Drug-Free Massapequa. You know, in the 10 years it's morphed, now it is drug-free Long Island. She is a great friend to LICAD, and she is the embodiment of community service and the Long Island spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Janice Talendo from Drug-Free Long Island. Good evening, and welcome to LICAD's 33rd Angel Bowl. My name is Janice Talento, Director of Drug Free Long Island. The Angel Bowl this year is virtual due to the pandemic, but our message is still the same. We stand together with our communities and agencies and organizations to bring you hope, encouragement, and support. We are all working remotely during this time, but we stand united because of everything that LICAD does throughout our communities. Our whole board congratulates LICAD and thanks them for everything they do for all our communities. And thank you for your support of this great organization. Janice, thank you for your message and all the work you do across Long Island. Uh, that's what community advocacy is all about. And from us to you, we can never pull off angel balls uh, without your support and that of all your workers uh, down there in Massachusetts. So we thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in that part of the evening that you're looking forward to and I'm looking forward to. It's the keynote address from um, a great, great, I, I, I mean, if I tell you when this COVID hit, we weren't sure what Angel Ball looked like. And I have to tell you, Ms. McKenzie Phillips couldn't have been more gracious, kind, and fully understand, even though it was a brief bit, of what LICAD is all about. She's gonna deliver her experience, strength, and hope. And when we talk about recovery, we talk about not only recovering our physical health and our mental health, but recovering together. And I think it's no coincidence that our hit television show was called One Day at a Time. As we say in certain circles, there is no coincidence. So ladies and gentlemen, a uh, fantastic actress, an advocate, and a professional working in the field of addiction, now helping others professionally, we're honored and privileged to give you our keynote address tonight uh, for Ms. Mackenzie Phillips, live from Los Angeles. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's really wonderful to be here. I mean, I know that I was really looking forward to coming to the island and attending the ball and being there with everybody where we could shake hands and hug and be together. But the world has changed. I mean, things just, you know, turned on a dime, it seemed. Um, so here we are. I'd like to congratulate LICAD on the first ever virtual ball and also the virtual angel ball and for 33 years of exemplary service to your community. It is tremendous uh, watching. I've been, I've been um, here sitting in my room 
uh, uh, watching everyone speak over the last half hour or so. And um, I want to uh, echo what, what Claudia Peters Ragney said. Hi, Claudia. Um, give till it hurts. Um, I, I want to say that when I was a little girl growing up in an addicted family where there was a rampant, um, unchecked, untreated uh, substance use disorder and uh, uh, undiagnosed mental health issues, um, I remember thinking, wow, I, I guess this is just the way people live. Uh, I didn't have, I was little, you know, so I didn't really have um, the the ability to think in the way that, wow, maybe this is just the way my family is. I thought this is the way everybody is. Um, and then as I, I grew into a, 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 a young younger woman and, um, you know, uh, if we are products of our environment, then I was destined to walk the path that I've walked. Um, and I remember thinking, oh, oh, wow, okay, other families aren't like this. Um, and then I remember later on in my life when I would ask, you know, has addiction touched your lives? You know, it was almost like, you know, a, a dirty little secret. People didn't raise their hands. People didn't say, yeah, you know, my Uncle Joe or my sister Jean, you know, uh, 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 struggle with that. But it has become so pervasive um, that I, I don't think we can find a family anymore in our country and probably across most of the world that hasn't been touched by these issues. Um, we were, I was listening to someone talk about, you know, the prescription opioid crisis. And I certainly am someone who against all odds survived uh, several doctors with tremendously heavy hands uh, writing prescriptions. And, you know, uh, I uh, imagine that I am, um, experience that you guys some of you out there hi everybody experience the same type of you know i guess i'm going to call it survivor's guilt that um that i do and you know i always wondered you know what what i'm 60 years old i always wondered what what is my life going to be like i never expected to live this long you know and i got to a point where where i had been uh, arrested in in my very late 40s for uh you know, um, felony possession. And I remember sitting, you know, handcuffed to a bench and thinking, wow, this is really happening. And I, uh, and, and I, I was saying that from the mind of a woman who had 10 years of happy, joyous and free recovery. And then I thought to myself, well, I guess I have to go back to the beginning because clearly I missed a spot, you know, and, um, and it's been a long road back since that day in August in, in, in 2008. Um, and I, uh, you know, unity service and recovery are, are the, the, uh, the way we live. And uh, I'm ever so grateful every day for the opportunity to share my story. And, and, you know, it's, look, you may think, well, you know, Mac, you're used to being on camera all the time. Yeah, but I'm used to saying somebody else's words on camera. I'm not used to looking at my phone with this funny little beauty light that I have here. I don't even know if it's making me beautiful, but, uh, you know, and just talking into the void, you know, um, uh, in person, I can look in your eyes and I can, you know, get, get involved with the, 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 uh, the, the exchange of energy that happens in a ballroom when we're all there happy and, and uh, celebrating recovery. But I got to say that um, I'm not particularly comfortable with this format, although I have been uh, running groups. You know, I, I'm a, the program director of a facility here in California called Breathe Life Healing Center. And um, I have to work from home because I have underlying health issues that make me particularly vulnerable. And so um, I have been doing a lot of virtual groups and a lot of um, virtual, you know, assessments and stuff like that the whole time I've... Uh, been home for about eight weeks. And, um, you know, what, what we are noticing at Breathe is that we, you know, we have a very active alumni program where we're all together a couple times a week. And, you know, we can't do that right now. And so we've had to shift gears and <coughs> step into a virtual um, alumni program. And I, I know that you guys are feeling this and seeing this, that people are struggling 
people are relapsing. People are turning back to their drug of choice. We go to what we know until we know differently. And so the work that LICAD is doing and the amazing, incredible, across the board uh, support that LICAD is offering uh, is something that, you know, I don't know what we have in Los Angeles or in California that is the equivalent, but I wanna say again, like Claudia said, give till it hurts, give till it hurts. People are suffering. Before this outbreak of COVID-19, we had a pandemic already. You know, people were dropping like flies. Uh, my people were dying, and I don't mean celebrities. I mean my people. I mean addicts and alcoholics and people with mental health issues who struggle and suffer, Who people who come from a history of deep, complex trauma and don't know any other way to self-soothe. And so when we become isolated and and we're looking into the void at a 12-step at a meeting, it's not the same, and people are struggling, and people need LICAD. People need people like you. And so to give is to save, uh, to save a life. And so I just wanted to stress that, you know, I, I, um, like I said, I never thought I'd live this long. I have a 33 year old son who, you know, uh, oddly, oddly doesn't have the gene. Uh, I, I don't know. I, you know, sometimes horrendous monsters like addiction can do magical things. They can skip a generation. Um, uh, and that hasn't happened in my family in many generations. So I'm tremendously grateful for that. Um, we give, we struggle, we pull ourselves back up again, one step forward, two steps back. But the most powerful thing that I can do is to remain in some state of gratitude and some state of willingness to run back into the fire with a big old bucket of water and show somebody the way out because I know hell's address. I have been there. I have been there. You know, people could say, oh my God, you grew up on TV. And, but that doesn't matter. It's what's going on inside. If you grew up the way I grew up, it's very difficult to talk about abuse and neglect because people are like, what, what do you mean you were neglected? You were a TV star. Well, the, the nervous system doesn't know you're a TV star. The nervous system, the, the embodiment of trauma uh, is something that's very powerful. And it took me many, many years to be able to stand tall as a woman in long-term recovery uh, and strong. And so I believe that my daily practice of gratitude and love and reaching out and giving is very much LICAD's mission. Um, and what we do at Breathe Life Healing Centers is very much LICAD's mission. And I'm just grateful to be, I mean, I wish we could all be together. I wish we could all be together because we'd be laughing, we'd be eating, we'd be running around the, the, the room and having a great time. And so I wish I could look into your eyes and tell you how much I appreciate all the work that you're doing. Everyone who's attending, everyone who's, you know, sent video messages. This is, an, these are unprecedented times. And uh, we will get through this. We will get on the other side. Things are going to look a lot different. But I know that a day at a time, I will come out on the other side of this thing intact and as whole as, as I can be at this point. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, coming tonight. And my message is never give up. Never give up. And keep the faith and unity, service, and recovery. Thank you so much. Oh, my love. I mean that. Thank you. You're on. Thank you, Mackenzie. That was so kind. Of, you've been a pleasure to converse with. And as this pandemic came down, um, you couldn't be more gracious in making sure that you delivered and live from Los Angeles. Thank you so much and uh, for working with LICAD. And we're all in this together. I'm certain we've read somewhere. This is definitely a we program. And tonight, and you've heard from some great treatment providers, some great advocates, some great elected officials and, and community champions. And really, LICAD has never been about the people that work here or the board of directors. It has always been about the we. So we're going to play one more video from some really special friends before we close out. I see we're at 190. So uh, you can either text 
or you can go to that red button right below the platform to, to keep giving. But this is really kind and generous of all of you. We are so grateful for our supporters and know that this is going to take us through into early summer to make sure that we can remain functional and help people 24 hours a day. So, by the way, the platform does not close tonight. We're going to review this angel ball. If there were difficulties of people you know getting on, we're going to rerun it for you uh, and put it online so you can see it. And, of course, if you want to make a donation tomorrow, the next day, we're all praying for all of your families. But you know what? Um, we have uh, two fantastic women that are going to close the evening. And i got to tell you, these two women who happen to be mother and daughter, uh, they know all about community service. And they're of the tradition of, let's do good things for people and not tell them. But you know what? They're the founders of a Huntington-based counseling center and wellness center. Please say hello to Barbara, board member, and Kay Pasilico from the Life Center in Huntington. Hey everyone, I'm Barbara Pasilico and this is my mom, Kay Pasilico, and here we are practicing social distancing. Our team of dedicated therapists are very ready to help people in these extraordinary times. We want to say congratulations to LICAT, but we also want to thank them for their work that is tireless and their dedication for the support of everyone in the Long Island community. We'll be together soon. Barbara Kay, you know how I feel about you and LICAT feels the same. You are truly heroines in your community, uh, and that's beyond Huntington. Um, to all of you tonight, I hope you learned something about the resources and the heroes and heroines that all of us, and that includes you at home, we're all working together to overcome. We shall overcome this pandemic, but we're only going to do it with the grace and the poise that if we work together in unity so we can recover and be in service to others. Ladies and gentlemen, I see $191,000 from us to all of you. Thank you very, very much. We offer you prayers that you and your family and your neighbors and all of our community across the entire country and the entire world remain healthy and safe. For those 65,000 plus Americans who have lost their battle and to the more than 150,000 who lost their battle last year to substance use. Our prayers and condolences go out with you tonight. You know, I think if this pandemic has shown us anything, it's real value in our ability to humble ourselves and accept what's going on. Uh, traditionally, we don't do this, but I think Judy Collins last year set the tone with having all 400 of us sing Amazing Grace. Don't worry, I'm not saying. But what we can do, and maybe you could do it at home, is join me in the we version of the Serenity Prayer. A moment of silence, please, for the sick and the suffering and their families. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the day. Ladies and gentlemen, from Lycat to you, you're all angels. Thank you very much. Be safe and good night.